I run out of the room and I yell my friends. And at the time I was living with these guys, uh, you know, uh, I'm like, Robbie Diego Ray. And I passed out. I hit the floor. They call 911. 911 shows up. Robbie Diego Ray. 911 shows up. <laughs> Welcome back to 100X. It's Marco Panthers Pamani. <laughs> We're here live with Tony, two times sharp. Talk to me, baby. <laughs> I like that little spin you did tonight. Uh, as always, uh, leave a five-star review, question, comment, concern. We love to hear the questions, comments, concern. We always bring them up on the show. Uh, should be a real good show tonight. Can't wait to get into what I like to call the four, week 14 recap. We get to talk playoffs this week. It's fun stuff. A lot of implications, a lot of hot stuff on the burner. Um, let's talk about that Panthers plus three and a half. Yep. And money line and ML winner. So um, I loved the Panthers so much. I I couldn't focus on everything else I had going on this week. Um, did I have a great NFL Sunday? No, but I when I tell you I hammered the Panthers. I had about four hundred thousand on the first half, and I had about four hundred thousand on the game. So when I tell you I had a great week, I had a great week. <laughs> did my other games look good? No, but it didn't matter because I literally I like I saw something, I loved it, and I attacked it. Um, I posted the first half win on my story the other day. It was just a God bless the Panthers. That was the easiest win I've had. Um, got a little shaky in the second half, but three and a half really never came into play. So the Panthers, I got to tell you what you did. You made the Panthers so convincing. People were blowing me up. They're like, I'm taking the Panthers. I don't care if they're just, you know, if they just got rid of Baker. You know what, you know what else? You as a as a team, you can't not win that game after Baker just had that win. Because you felt that way. I, I well, I I mean, it made me feel even better about the pick that I gave because when Baker had that comeback, Sam Darnold's like that fucking guy. I didn't like him, and then we went and did that. I got to win this week, so I loved it even more. Um, this week, I'm actually going to give everybody a little four team steam. Four team steam, really? As opposed to the hundred X parlay, steam. I'm giving a four team steam this week. We're going to get into that a little later in the show. Wow! Um, talk to you about your prosciutto pound. What happened in it? Hey guys, uh, I'm sure you're wondering why I'm shirtless during the hundred X, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I fucking never <laughs> used Manscape before. I got paid to use Manscape, and I fucking love it now. So here's what I'm going to tell you: If you use this and you want to get rid of, you see this? <laughs> You want to get rid of that chest here? Wow! You, you don't Look want that nip. You wipe, when wife when the wifey gets down on there and she licking the nipple, she doesn't want hair on there. Yeah, don't you dirty bastard! <laughs> All right, look at this. I'm cleaning it up. It, it's smooth. It's easy. It's actually really nice. I mean, look at that. I just trimmed a whole titty on camera for you, and it looks great, Anthony. Read the discount because you look at how clean that is without even trying. I'm not looking in the mirror. I'm looking into the camera. This is great. This is great product and it's actually solid. I like how nimble it is. And if you ever want to go down there, it's nice Cuzzy. and skinny. When you pull the prick to the left, you're able to like get real close. Cuzzy, before I go any further, I just want to let you know, you could save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash 100X. That's right, cousin. 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash 100X. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's greatest hit. And let me just tell you, if you're really looking to get your woman in the right state of mind this weekend, what I like to do is, I like to take this new product, I like to throw my leg up, and I like to hit that gooch real fucking good. And that's why they officially started calling me over at Manscaped headquarters, Gucci Mane. <laughs> The prosciutto wasn't cut quite thin enough. Uh, I like my prosciutto cut thin, cuz What lost in that? Um, it, it was Tua. Ultimately, it was Tua. I had him throwing for not much. Here's the crazy thing about Tua now. I don't feel bad about this because I'm not a Tua fan. I'm not either. But he was set by Vegas on the line for 289 yards. That's crazy, and he only got half of that. He got 145, 10 of 28, one score. Uh, is the Chargers D that good? I can't confirm nor deny just yet, but I will tell you this. Tua's not that good. I, I do not find Tua to be that 
the me- I mechanics. Said I texted you the other night. Yeah. Dur- I texted him during the game the other night. I said, could you imagine if we reversed QB roles in this game alone? If oh, we took Herbert we and put him on... F- if, yeah, if we put Herbert on Miami and we put Tua on the Chargers, you would have Miami probably 12-1. and one. Probably 12-1. and one. Throwing to guys like Waddle, uh, Hill, oh God. Uh, even Gasecki, who's a giant target, and then on top of that... Maybe, maybe a top three, probably play caller in the game. Can you imagine uh, that? In my eyes, Herbert would just go on fucking fire. Yeah, I, w- I actually, I would love to see a, like a real sit in the pocket QB. Yes, in that in that offense. Um, okay, we're gonna rock and roll here. We're gonna talk about Monday Night Football. Um, devastating day for me as a Cardinals supporter, seeing Kyler go down on the third play of the game. Um, devastated me and what devastated me even more is is not like i didn't bet the game pregame i was gonna bet the game live in game because i figured the patriots would get a lead and i always tell you guys when there's a game that's like two points just wait for a live because you're gonna get more value and him going down i just pulled the e-break i didn't bet the game i should have bet the patriots live because we all had to agree that the patriots were gonna win after that injury um but yeah just ugly game I, I it is what it is. When I lost that four teamer that I posted, I didn't have much love into the game anyway. I said to myself, "This is not a good game to bet." I know. I told you last week. I though, know. New England all day in this game. He did, and he did, and guess what? I did not bet the game at the start. Yeah, you wanted to catch it live. I bet if if you guys played along, I bet a fucking prop set that hit uh, the king of prop that hit. And then this motherfucker Stevenson goes down after just two carries, lot eight of, yards. A lot of injuries. Kills me there, but I did actually, uh, to your point, I took New England. I waited for that game to teeter-totter. I took a minus 140. Oh, you, okay, a little value. Because you could have got plus three, uh, three and a half at one point? Yes. Little value. Uh, it was right after. It was in the third quarter at some point. I, I took them. Right as they were going in to take the lead, perhaps, I think it was. Okay. 140, though. Nice bet. Nice bet. It was a good bet. I was glad I, I cashed in there. Um, I want to. I don't even want to talk about the Patriots' defense. They faced a backup quarterback with no preparation in the week. Um, the scoop and score was a fluke. He was playing loose with the ball. It's not like it was a talented punch out. Um, the two he, hates, he hates the Patriots. I hate the Patriots. I fucking, Just say it. They suck. You like, hate them. The, here, the Patriots are in the last seat of the playoffs right now. They're facing the Raiders this week, which I know everyone in the country is going to bet the Raiders or bet the Patriots, except for me. I'm going to take the Raiders. Um, and that's one of the teams in the four teams team. Um, but all I'm going to say is, is they are um, minus 250 to not make the playoffs. They are plus 200 to make the playoffs. We'll get into those playoffs. The public does not give a fuck about the Patriots. Or the books don't give a fuck about the Patriots. So let me give you a little background story. I'll go ahead. Could I? What's your story time about Could that? Could I please give you a little go story? Go ahead, buddy. I love you. So listen, 2018, I'm covering the Bears, right? This is a true story now. You'll appreciate this. You're a class, class, class type of guy. All right, individual. let's hear it. Let's hear it. Covering the Bears, I get to the game early. It's about 8 30, 9 o'clock. Get myself a nice set of fruit, as I always do in a cup of Joe. <laughs> I make my way down into the tunnel. I've covered now probably eight, nine games in the NFL at this point. Okay, you're young, you're 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 hungry, young, hungry, and I just I'm starting to really feel what it's like, like the opposing team coming in. You know, it's a little bit different at this point. I did a ton of NBA. Bottom line is, the Patriots organization. They come in nine a.m. Every guy's got a beautiful suit on. Oh, here we go. Hey, beautiful blue suit. Like a like probably a white. If you blue. know who I am, I wear like matching outfits from different brands that are sweatpants and sweatshirt all the time because I hate wearing a suit. I don't like being uptight. So me not liking the Patriots now even makes more sense. It actually let me finish. You're all gonna right, like this. Go ahead. So these guys have beautiful undershirt, white, red pinstripe, beautiful, you know, Patriot head right here, beautiful. But do you know what they do? What? They wear Patriots hats. Oh, God. With the suit. Okay. Which is a little eh. 
All right. But then they all wear those Air Force Ones with the suit. Blue, oh. red, that, that's white. That's cute. That's when Tom Brady was the quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, that's when, like, they, were, just that's when they were legit. Just a class organization, So cause. Tom Brady's not the quarterback there anymore. Oh, Tom Brady, he, Tom I can't get him on the Patriots. Tom Brady's really not me. much of a quarterback at all, at all this year. Um, Mac Jones is not a quarterback this year. Um, but we're going to talk about a team that uh, was 12-1 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Here we go. Prior to winning this game, it was... The Niners. Brock Purdy, first ever to win in his career start. Oh, wait, Brock Purdy, first to win first start of a career over Tom? Really? Yes. That's a real stat? Yes. Yeah, so he is the first starter. Rookie QB. To come in as a starter, first year in the league, uh, as a starter, wow. beats Tom Brady. That's, okay, that's really freaking cool. And I'm not going to lie, seeing Tom Brady. He looks good too, by Seeing the way. Tom Brady sign autographs after the game, especially a guy that picked him. I mean, can we talk about class anymore? This guy got his ass pounded by the Niners and he fucking went out there he, and he was just signing autographs for these young kids. I was done talking about class when it comes to the name Brady fucking 10 years ago. The guy's just a, a f- the best. I, I mean, just love him so I, much. How do you not like Tom Brady? But Brock Purdy, <sighs> um, people are acting like shocked over this. This kid at Iowa State was the whole offense. He he passed for over 12,000 yards. He won, I think, two bowl games. He is legit. Yep. He is not a fluke. It is not like a, a, just because he doesn't have explosive speed, just because he doesn't have an explosive arm. Neither did Drew Brees. No, and listen, when you're Mr. Irrelevant, last pick, yeah. last round, you're not going to get much respect. Not the to mention, is, he was behind of, two quarterbacks right, all year. That's my whole point. So a lot of pieces to the puzzle have to fall out of place. You're going to lose Garoppolo. You're going to lose Lance. Uh, then, you know, we're going to bench Garoppolo, start Lance. Lance gets hurt. Garoppolo lo- looks good. He gets hurt. Crazy. Hurdy time. He beats Brady. Um, huge, huge, huge. Huge win gun, for Frisco. Gun to my head today. If you said, Marco, I need you to pick a Super Bowl winner right now, I would take the Niners plus 1,000. I think currently on DraftKings, it's at plus 1,000. I would find the best action I can. Wow. And I would take that today. If you said, Marco, gun to your head, I want you to pick a like a long shot, I'm taking 40 to 1 on the Chargers. Well, that's good because we're going to get into your favorite NFC and AFC okay. uh, representation for the Super Bowl currently right now. So maybe hold that, hold off on that. I want to hear I'm a little bit about I'm excited to talk those. about what I like. You know, I, I'm uh, you get real excited. Call it the narcissist in me. I just want everybody to hear what I like. <laughs> um, okay, we're, before we get on to that, uh, Cowboys signed T.Y. Hilton. Uh, t- I, I could have swore T.Y. Hilton couldn't walk anymore. Um, amazing receiver. I don't know if he still got it, but clearly they liked his workout. What are your feelings on that? I think this is a good move. I think this is a great move. It's not I a- think that this move will come to fruition okay. in games that truly matter or the playoffs. He's going to have to play the slot, a spot T.Y. does not like because you get hit a lot, and he's going to need to make some tough catches while getting hit, which he obviously doesn't want to get hit anymore. Um, but I get that Odell, something spooked the, the Cowboys with him and I'm super curious on what that is and if another team signs him um but I guess the next step is I mean I think if you look at their what current receiving core right it's basically made up of CD Lamb and Gallup yeah okay yeah so this is kind of just the third component they miss, like I said they miss Amari Cooper right this now. is the kind of guy they miss who Cooper. is going to get matched up in the slot come playoff time with a linebacker He'll run right by a linebacker. He's gonna make he's gonna make a big fucking play. The Cowboys are gonna be like for for those of you that aren't big in the football world, um, and you haven't watched a ton of football. T. Y. Hilton is known for crazy legs and long ball catches. The guy is an absolute speedster, and I bet you even now he might not be as fast as he was. He's still faster than the guys that are covering him. Um, then the last thing we're gonna talk about is Baker Mayfield. I don't ever want to talk about Baker Baker Mayfield because I just I'm mad at him, um, but. <laughs> Kudos to him. Um, I was going to say. You get- I think it's a testament that his coaching in, in Carolina was shit. And a coach that backed him, like, said, hey, go throw the fucking ball. 
Right. Stop fucking playing like a pussy. Yeah, like it's not going to be rocket science. This is not on like Thursday night. You're going to go throw fucking 25 yard fades and you're going to win games. Okay. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Um, great job to him. I give him a lot of credit. He had a lot of criticism, a lot of doubters. I was one of them. And this is, I, I supported Baker right out of college. So I, I, I do like him as a person. I think he holds himself in a nice professional way. I like his competitive nature. Um, he needs to stay in, in Los Angeles, though. It, when Stafford comes and plays, I think Stafford's going to play one more year. And I want him to stay there because I think he could actually be a good quarterback for them in the future. So it's funny you mentioned that. And it's something I really wanted to talk about. The fact that, so you look at Baker from an X's and O's standpoint. Yeah. He's in Cleveland with Stefanski, right? Stefanski is, to me, he's the fucking poor man's bum version of McVay. St Stefanski's he, just so, he's like your fourth grade teacher you don't like. He runs the pro style play action pass, misdirection passing. Uh, you know, Stefanski a lot of runs the offense that you could sit on the couch and not know anything about football. And be like they're going to run the ball here. Yep, and right. they do. That's what drives me crazy about that team. That's why the Rams. Um, should have more success with Baker Mayfield because he's pretty used to that style of offense. We're going to get a true test test of for him in the in in the frozen tundra of Green Bay. He's going to get he, this, he's going to get beat up in that game. I'll you know, get into that later. I won't lie. I hope he wins in Green Bay. I like to see Green Bay lose. Um, I'd but, always like to see. see him lose, but I think he's going to get beat up. Let's talk about the AFC East playoff picture, however. Mm. Something that I know you have a real, real, uh, you know, big sack that you really want to talk about because you have no interest in talking about New England, but oh, we're going to talk about good. it anyways. Um, AFC East playoff picture current, right? You got the Bills in the one seed, uh, 10 and 3. They look to have, have that locked up. Sean, uh, time out. My buddy Sean won his parlay for $126,000. I'll get the graphic over to my guys so they can post it when you're on the show if you want to see it. Oh my goodness. They only scored 42 points. Combined. Combined. I, I'm going to try and get Sean on the line right now. We're going to try and get a live reaction from him. This is unbelievable. He was a huge... They scored... 140 something points in the first half. I, I'm I'm absolutely <laughs> mind blown. I hope he answers. I cannot my boy Sean, guys, <laughs> he's on the phone. We're live on the show. Sean, tell him what you just won. Dude, I just won a hundred and thirty fucking thousand bones. <laughs> I won a hundred and thirty fucking thousand bones. And I'm telling you, there was a hundred and seventy <laughs> points in the first half, and I had under two. 28. They could only score 25 points in the second half, and they scored 23. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cuz. Cuz, there looked to be a lid on the basket for one of those teams. Bro, it's uh, unbelievable. I don't mean to interrupt the show, guys, but when your boy hits up for a buck 25 parlay, you got to stop the show. You got to show him some love. I was going to the playoff <laughs> picture. Shawnee, I love you. Shawnee, I love you. Big win. I'm going to get back to the show. I'm going to call you after. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> I love my gambling <laughs> friends. All right, let's go. Oh, let's talk. Oh, so my Bills God. 10 and 3, first in the division. No surprise I'm there. Dead. But it does get heated up. You have Miami oh. at 8 and 5 in the wild card two spot, six seed. Then you have New England 7 and 6 in the seven seed wild card All current. Right, I'm going to make this simple. And the Jets as Here's well. Here's who I think is going to make the playoffs. Here's who I know is making the playoffs. The one or two seed in the AFC is going to be Buffalo or KC. There's no one else to talk about. That's what it's going to be. So I'm going to give you who's 100% making the playoffs. Buffalo, Kansas City, Baltimore. After that, oh, and Cincinnati. But Cincinnati will be a wild card. You think? I, I, they can Now keep in mind, that's they a crazy, can steal Baltimore's thunder and get in and then shoot them down to the Lamar car. Lamar Jackson's back, not this week. He's back the week after. And that's when things are going to get hard again because J.K. Dobbins from Ohio State University can run the ball with the best of them. They're a different offense with him on the field. Um, man, I feel like rejuvenated after my boy hit that part. Yeah, that was crazy. My dopamine's flowing hard We thought he was dead to rights. Right now. Hard. I'm I'm flowing hard right now. All right, so um, teams, I think that I... Here, I want the Chargers to make the playoffs. I want New England to get their busted ass out. I want Justin Herbert in the seventh seed. I want them to go and I want them to face, um, wouldn't they face Kansas City in the first round? They would. That would turn me on. Oh, you'd get such a stiff prick off of oh, that. Oh, I would hammer the Chargers 
plus the points in that game because I am a her believer. <laughs> you don't know what that is? That's Justin Herbert. I'm, I'm a Justin Herbert believer. Herber. <laughs> I put it together because I'm a her believer. Actually, funny you say that because the Chiefs uh, San Diego matchup always just comes out to be just a straight scratch. And, quad and I, here's, what, here's what I'll tell you. What a weird division in Tennessee. Uh, the Tennessee Titans are seven and six. Um, a long shot to make the playoffs, but definitely doable. And it sounds toxic is the Jacksonville Jaguars. If somehow Tennessee goes cold and the Jags go hot, the Jags would go to the playoffs. You see who the Jags are playing this week? Um, who are they playing this week? Take a look at that game. Let's take a look. The Jags played Dallas. If somehow they can beat Dallas. I told you now, they're plus 188 oh, on the ML. That turns home. me on now. Dallas has played two shit teams back to back. Uh, pounded on both of them. Well, no, I'm sorry. You know what? You're, hearing it, on you're hearing it now on the show. I didn't even talk about it. I'm taking the Jaguars plus the points and money line this week. I When I map out a chance for the playoffs, it gives me a renewed fucking motivation. You're hearing it on the show right now. I'm taking the Jags over Dallas. That is my dog of the week. You're hearing it live <laughs> on the show. That's my dog of the week. Ouch, that's going to hurt because I love Dallas. But you know what? <sighs> hey, and I quote, Sunshine. Hey, I, I, I looked at him and I said, hey, Cuzzy. Hey, the Jags are only plus 185. I, I need the graphic of, uh, of, of Trevor Lawrence with his hair flowing. <laughs> Sunshine. Because <laughs> I think he's coming out and I think he's actually going to play really good. I really do. I'm sorry. Hey, all of a sudden, prior to the show, I look at him. I say, hey, no, Cuzzy, no the chance. Jags are plus 188. Oh. He goes, I'm not touching that game. I, I wouldn't even look at that game. Word for word, exactly what I said. <laughs> but as we sit here and we map out exactly what's happening in that game, I have no choice. I have no choice. Because if they can beat Dallas, then they, they can. Then they, they can. Then they play the Jets. If they somehow can go three and one in their final four games, one of the games is against Tennessee. If they beat Tennessee, that's a whole swing right there. Like they actually can make the playoffs. And I got news for you. They got a good defense. Yeah, they you, got a good offense too. And, and not only would they make the playoffs, they would host a game. Really? They would host a game. Wow, that would be an epiphany in they, Jacksonville. They would host. Probably as of right now. They would host the Bengals. Uh, probably Joe Burrow might get a lot get his way there, but who knows? I got news for you. A wild card game is 1v1. Oh, I am so fired up Anything about that. Happen. I'm so fired up about that. I'm telling you, the Jags, ladies and gentlemen. What are their odds to make the playoffs? They're only plus 350. They're making the playoffs because I'm going to give you a little outside bet. Jags to make the playoffs plus 350. If that's a fun one, if you want to plug it in. Um, wow. That is fun. I am so turned on right you now. You should be. Oh, I'm so fired you should up. Be. I like finding a team late in the year to kind of come out of nowhere and fuck with everybody. The Giants did that in 2007 when they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. They were four. They they were in the playoffs and they were 40 to one to win the Super Bowl. I was a young college buck. I put a nickel on that and I won myself <laughs> some money. And I remember saying to my mom, "I don't need your money. I got my own." When I got eight thousand beans in my fucking room. His cash. mom said, "Go ahead, get yourself a half yeah. pair of shoes, yeah. Marco." Oh God, good times. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. We got we went off on there. No, no, no. I'm gonna get you back on pace. While you're hard, ready, and ready to go. I'm ready, kid. It, we're talking about Super Bowl matchups. Who would it be right this minute? NFC, AFC. You've already talked about it. Tell us why. Um, I'm going to give you like the, just the North, like, oh my God, it's going to be Buffalo versus, you know, the, the Eagles, but that's just not how the playoffs work. I was going to say, um, you're going to do that? Yeah, I know. It's like, that's boring. Um, if you want my honest to God opinion, I, I think that the hardest out for a team in the playoffs is going to be the, um, the Baltimore Ravens. I think a healthy Baltimore Ravens with their defense and their run game is going to be the most miserable team to play in the AFC. So if you were going to say, Marco, pick a team to go to the Super Bowl, a little bit of a long shot, a little bit of a not long shot. I would take the Ravens in the Super Bowl against, hmm, this is just hip firing right now. It's definitely not the Vikings. My daughter could play on the Vikings right now. <laughs> Probably the Niners. Baltimore really? versus the Niners. And that'd be a rematch. Of the lights out game with Colin Kaepernick 
in which that would be a remake. So you have no. He, this man has no respect for the city of Philly. For the city of Philly, you just don't think they could do it. No, I just think. Um, I think what they're doing right now is super impressive. I just think it's too commercial, and I feel like they're blowing their load early. Like. I feel like they're showing a lot of their hand too soon. And I'm not saying they can't continue it. They look unfucking believable. I bet against them. This was me. Like, this is my face when I bet against them this week. I know I bet them this week, remember? I, I swear, had, every, every play, my chin would go in. I'd have a double chin. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm shook. But like I said, I feel like they're showing too much of their cards. And I'm also worrying about injury. They were up a ton of points and they were still playing like they were still tied. And, and I like that type of energy there. You know, it's a, that's, that's, it's a hard nosed city that wants to play hard, uh, all, all whatever, 60 minutes. I just, I don't know. I think when the playoffs come, the Niners are going to shut them down. That's the new coach. The coach likes to pile Sirianni. it on. I like and, him. And because of that, I like him. I could definitely see where your head is at about getting hurt. Um, I am going to say that the Chiefs are an absolute lock to be in the Super Bowl. This I, year. I didn't want to pick a commercial team. I know. I like have to Buffalo, take the Chiefs, KC, though. like I want a little drama. So I'm giving you my 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 layup. Niners are a layup, by the way, for uh, for the NFC, in my professional opinion. And I'm no professional. I'm just a guy that lives, you know, I, to a normal me, life. The Niners do not have a solidified Haters. Uh, QB right now. Who? The Niners. Will you stop it? No, I like this kid a lot. They don't need. They don't need a a. They don't need a crazy QB with they their do. offense. No, they I'm gonna tell don't. you why. Their receivers are not that good. Bro, Ayuk and Samuel are good. Samuel's hurt. He's gonna be back to normal. I'm, I'm worried about his. Rec I'm worried about his recovery. If he's healthy, I'm not buying it. If he's healthy, they're going to the Super Bowl. That's what I think. Right now, I'm not buying it. I'm just telling you guys one thing. I see the Chiefs being there over the Bills, no problem. I know the Bills are the p favorite at plus 380 in mm -hmm. the AFC yeah. and overall. I see the Chiefs beating them. I think when it comes down to it, uh, if they do get to the AFC title game each, I think that Mahomes is going to show. That'd be uh, a fun rematch because we both know that Buffalo won the first one this year. 100%. Yeah, I won a lot of money on that game. 100%. I wouldn't want to go against him twice. But I wouldn't want to go against Mahomes. Mahomey. When when the fucking bowl's on the line. Yeah. And I'm definitely taking the Eagles to make the Super Bowl. Okay. Fair enough. Um, you're Mr. You know, you're I, I gotta do it. It's no secret. It's no secret. He he likes the layups. I love layups. I don't, I don't hate it. I'm I a, like shooting free throws and I'm a three point shooter. He's a three point shooter. There's <laughs> weeks that I'm fucking draining ten for ten. There's weeks where I go two for eight, you know, or two for ten. I, whatever. Cuzzy, I hear you, baby. Um, okay. So if we had a Super Bowl bet, we just talked about that. Um all right, so truth or ride. Uh, next segment's called truth or ride. NBA fan sourced parlay. Talk to me. How this? So work? I'm going to hit you with this. I was part. not involved in this, by the way. Yeah. So what we did was we reached out to the community, uh, the social media community, and we said, "Hey, you are going to get a parlay of that you like. Oh boy. Uh, we're going to shoot it at you. Fuck. So what you're going to do is this is a new segment, ladies and gentlemen. This again now is called Truth or Ride. Okay. So you are either going to ride this par. I'm going to give you the par stipulations. Okay. Or you're going to or you're going to give a truth. And if you're going to give a truth, so let me give you some examples of a truth. I'm going to be uh, so embarrassed. First I'm, time you had sex. Oh, my God. Uh, maybe your most embarrassing story if you shit in your pants before. Oh, boy. Uh, maybe the biggest losing weekend you've ever had. Maybe the biggest winning weekend you've ever had. Uh, maybe you, you want to let everybody know that you have an eight and a half inch prick. <laughs> I, that wasn't listed on here. But I'm 5'8", but I'm blessed. He's 5'8", man. Man. We'll get into it. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Now, parlays are Kings at Raptors. This person, believe it or not, okay, chose the Kings. Okay. Okay. Don't hate it. But the they... next one is Blazers at Spurs. This okay. person chose the Blazers. Okay. Okay. This last and not least is going to be the Timberwolves at the Clip Show. Okay. He chose the Clippers at home. Okay. So I am going to take a look. So uh, take a look. What are you doing? Are you riding? Are you not riding? What's your plan? <sighs> this is interesting. It's very interesting. I sort of like this game, don't you? Um, I am going to probably um, do a truth. I'm not going to ride that parlay. If I was you, 
I would do a truth. I'm going to do a truth because I'm not riding that parlay. I think tomorrow the Timberwolves could shock the Clippers. And I think people are going to be really heavy on the Clippers tomorrow um, because of their win over Boston um, by 20 the other night. Yeah. So I can see a little bit of a letdown game. That's that's my opinion. I'm just, hey, I'm not an NBA expert. Never claimed to be. um, But you asked me and that's how I feel. Um, And I agree with you, by the way, because that's the one game of those three that has me frightened. Um, so I'm going to, I have to like give somebody a options for truth. Is that how it works? Oh no. Cause you're just going to give your truth out right now. You're going to tell right a now? story. You're gonna I'm going to do most beautiful. embarrassing story. Okay. My most embarrassing story. And I don't like to talk about this, right? Cause I don't want to be known as the guy that you'll get it. I was out with this girl who I thought was super attractive and she is, she's really pretty. And my wife's not home right now. So like, uh, so she'll see it tomorrow so, instead of hear it from yeah, the other room. She'll, she won't hear it. I'll have a great night tonight, but she'll throw some shots at me. I um, had took this girl out. We went to a concert. We had a great night. I, I, my buddy at work was like, hey, Marco, pop a little uh, Viagra before you, you know, give her the poundy. And I was like, all right, like, all right, I'll try it. Like, <laughs> I don't struggle with that, bro, but like, I'll try it. Like, that was my response. I was like, sure, some extra. I, I was 20. Two years old, roughly. Oh, you were given extra. I was given hard pipe, you know? Wow. So what I did was. PVC. So pipe. here's what happened. I took the, I took it and I gave this girl a fucking pounding, right? And I remember she, she decided to sleep over and we got done and I went downstairs and I had a bowl of Lucky Charms because I wanted to replenish the sugar in my body because I was sweating, okay? When I came back <laughs> upstairs to lay down. Hey, I love. Let me interrupt for a second. Okay. I love how you made sure, you know, you took health in your own hands, replenished, got some sugar in So you. here's what happened. Very good. I go back into bed. I lay down. I'm feeling like all fucked up. I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? I all of a sudden, I feel the blood <laughs> rushing to my, my head, it felt like, and I ran out of my room. The girl's sleeping still in my room. I run out of the room and I yell my friends. And at the time I was living with these guys, uh, you know, uh, I'm like, Robbie Diego Ray. And I passed out. I hit the floor. They call 911. 911 shows up. Robbie Diego Ray. The 911 shows up and they're like, what kind of drugs did you do? And they think I'm a crackhead. A lot of people have accused me of doing drugs. I'll do a drug test anytime. I don't do drugs. I've never, I, I take an edible maybe once a week. That's it. What drugs do you do? Tell me what drugs you do. I'm like, I didn't do drugs. I took a, I took a Viagra. And I remember that the paramedic looked at his buddy and he, he laughed at me and I'm in the, I'm in the ambulance, right? My heart rate's at 27. I feel like I'm going to fucking die. And they're like, so you took a Viagra, huh? And I was like, yeah, that did it work. You know, I'm like, can we not play around with my heart? Right? Like I'm <laughs> don't play with my heart. I'm, I'm, I don't play with my prick. My anxiety is building up as I tell the story. So I almost died because I fucked. That's my most embarrassing <laughs> story. I've got one more story that matches it, but it's a little different. I'll save that one for another rainy day. But if any of you have ever passed out and have taken a Viagra, I'm sorry. My mom had to find out. She came to the hospital. <laughs> she went back to my house, took all the pills away. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Never again. Never again. <sighs> That's excellent, cousin. Yeah. Truth or ride was fun. Um, I can't ride the Clippers tomorrow. That's the reason why I'm not riding with the parlay. Kings lost by 20 tonight. Um, I could see them bouncing back. I could see the Trailblazers beating the Spurs. Um, but yeah, I can't ride the the, the Clippers over the Wolves. Um, NBA is about to be number one focus. Uh, here's an NBA bet of the week. Would you like to give one? Um, is that for like tomorrow's games? Yeah. Huh, let me take a look. Let me take a look while you take a look. Um, looks. If you were to put a gun to my head, because that's the line I like to use, because like, that's how you gamble. Gun to your head. What is your pick tomorrow? Ooh. I would probably... Oh, God. I kind of like the Timberwolves tomorrow. The reason why I'm not taking this. So I'd probably bet the Timberwolves plus six and a half tomorrow. Um, that would get them to 14 and 14 on their record. And I always like a team trying to get back to the even money. Um, so, yeah, that's my pick. Six and a half. What's your pick? I'll tell you what, I like the Thunder plus mm. four at home tomorrow night against the Heat. Hard to hate it because that's a weird line. Yeah. I like weird Th- lines. So I'm going to take the Thunder plus four at home tomorrow night against the Heat. Keep in mind now, we are, as the NFL season starts to digress, it has not yet, 
Not Believe even me, close. We're, we're in for a fucking treats upon treats. Oh, yeah. But we will dive deep into NBA. We do enjoy, love talking about NBA. We'll try to implement some more NBA. I've been seeing kind of the, the we're gonna, messages um, and whatnot. Our goal eventually is to have a show, uh, you know, four days a week. Yeah. So we'll be talking about NBA all the time. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, next topic is the Hater Hotline for week 15. Bring, bring. Um, the hotline's calling, cousin. So here's what's going on. Um, a lot, okay, so half of the cappers want to be my friend, and I want to be their friend. Like, I, I'm a nice person. Anybody who's ever met me can never say I'm not nice, because I'll, I'll stop my workouts at, at the gym, and I'll take a picture with somebody if they want it. I'll, I'll, I'll go out of my way to make sure that everyone that meets me knows that I at least care about them in some capacity. That's 100% true. So with that being said, other half of the cappers are just pricks, but they do a half of them do it for the attention. And I, you don't need to do that. Just talk to me. That's all you got to do is talk to me. So I thought the best way to do this was is get 10 cappers in the room. Or if somebody wants to jump in with the cappers, because we all know half of the cappers that say they're cappers aren't true cappers. They're just taking money from people or they just write capper in their bio. Right. That Yeah. So with that being said, if somebody wants to jump in because they just want to gamble, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to get 10 people in this room um, and I want to bring them to the house. I'm I'm going to do background checks on these people because if they're going to be in my home, I want to know who they are and make sure that they're clear. I'm going to make sure that there's food catered. I'm going to make sure that uh, everything's A plus through and through for these guys that come in. It's going to be the first class experience. Um, so long story short, I'm going to try and get 10 people here this weekend. I am pushing hard. Him and I are going to connect tomorrow and get a hold of these guys and get them booked if we can make it work. If I can get 10, I'm going to do this. I already got commitments from about four, like hard commitments. And I haven't reached out to other people. Um, and if those guys come, the winner of the capper challenge is going to be on the show. This is a big moment, guys. Um, It'll be our first guest outside of our live show. It will. This is going to be a big, big moment. You guys are going to have the opportunity now again uh, to prove who you really Yeah, and I'm okay bringing are. a guy on because you know what? I'm okay with a guy that says, hey, I sell picks for a living and I'm really good at it. Great. I'm cool with that. But at least you have to prove it here first. Like at least prove that you're worth something. And I get it. One week doesn't tell the whole year. A guy might come here, get hot, and then suck the rest of his life. Who knows? But it's a fun way for us to get a little entertainment. We're going to have cameras on, <laughs> mics on. We're going to be able to get like the true emotions because it's going to be an all-day fucking grind. And I love that. Um, it's going to be an all-day day grind. And guys, keep in mind, you have the ability to win hundreds of thousands of dollars. Dollars. We're paying first, second, and third. First place is six hundred thousand. Second place will be two hundred and fifty thousand. Third place will be a buck fifty. Thank you for your time. And the other seven get a handshake and a hug, and then they gotta fly home. Um, <laughs> but that's gambling because you know what? When you win, you win. When you lose, you lose. You gotta live with the consequences. Um, so that's the hater hotline. I'm gonna leave it at that this week. I'm gonna let Anthony take over for primetime games, and we're gonna go from there. Yeah, primetime games. So we're gonna kicked off started first this week as we always usually do. Uh, with Thursday night ball. Mm -hmm. um, however, there's going to be some Saturday slate as well. Okay. So let's talk about Thursday before we get ahead of ourselves. 49ers minus three and a half at the Seahawks. A real hostile environment. Take me through this game. Maybe a lean, maybe something so, you fun like, fact, dislike. This line was Niners minus one a week ago. Yes, the line has already moved three and a half point or two and a half points. Um, I'm anticipating it moving another half point. Um, I am not betting this game, but with Debo Samuel hurt, it'd be hard for me not to take the Seahawks. If I can catch the Seahawks plus seven, I might jump on that. Yeah, I personally, um, I am leaning, not betting currently uh, the Seahawks at home as well. As I said before, not only do they have a hostile environment, primetime game that places the 12s, as I like to call them, right? The 12s. They just lost two at home. Yeah, so. they'll be going fucking crazy. Uh, it's a big game for them. This is a divisional game. This is a must-win game this for is Seattle. A, this is a must. The reason why it's a weird game, and I, I, I don't like Seattle. It's no secret. I just bet against them pretty heavy, but... This is a game where they need it for the playoffs. I don't want them in the playoffs. I'd rather them lose. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm taking a lean on this game, Seattle, just as can, you are. Can but you give me a Thursday night build, though? Oh, I'm going to give you that Thursday night build. Give, me, give it to me, baby. Listen, give it to me. I got to tell you. I'm going to tell you guys this. This could come back to haunt me 
because one of you fuck jobs will get in my DMs and start screaming at me if it doesn't pan out. Could come back to haunt me, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is, win or lose, my absolute most confident, most favorite All Thursday right. night par. Oh, boy. And this Thursday night par is going to be Christian McCaffrey to score a touchdown. Okay. Okay. That's going to be DK, 40-plus receiving yards. So DK may have 40 yards. CMC again now, 50 rushing yards. CMC, 50 rushing yards. Okay. And an absolute fucking layup, George Kittle to get 25 yards. The only thing that scares with, me. Up, with Debo Samuel out, he should get 25. But you know what scares me about this? He's only my, now I, I know, don't quote me on only, but he should be. I take it as only, okay? Go ahead. He's only minus 420. Okay. To catch for those 25 yards. That's kind of crazy. That's low. He should be like minus 1,000, keep in mind. Yeah, well, especially with no Samuel. Um, I don't hate it. I get it. What is that, Pagan? That's a plus 260 banger. With, I think all of those are feasible. Rattle them off quick now. Yeah, rattle them off quick. CMC to score a touchdown. CMC to get 50 yards. 40 yards out of DK Metcalf. And last but not least, Georgie Kittle, 25 yards. Kitty Kittle. All right. I like that. I don't hate it. Um, we're going to go on to the Saturday game. There's a big Saturday game. Yeah, um, there is. Dolphins versus Bills. Bills minus seven and a half. Um, I think you and I both think this game is going to be close. Um, I don't think I'm leaning Dolphins plus seven and a half. Um, they've had two bad weeks in a row. Could it be three? Maybe, but I would assume they're going to be scheming a lot. I am going to do I'm going to take a play out of your playbook. Ready. I'm going to wait for Buffalo to go down. Okay. And hopefully get three points. Got it. And then live Miami at what I think will be around 10, 10 and a half. That's a great play because at some point you'd have to assume Buffalo is going to get a lead. I don't hate it, but if you had to tell me Marco Pickett pregame, I'd take Delphins plus seven and a half. Um, that would be my lean and where I'd be at. Um, keep in mind in this game, please, please, please. With caution, take a look at the over-under. Very, very explosive deep threat offenses and the over-under is sitting currently as we speak 42 and a hook, which to Could me, be some weather implications. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. have to look Buffalo into that game might more. be snowing or I don't know what's going on. I have to look into it as well. But that just seems a little bit too low when, when these guys throw for 60 a rip. Dolphins are definitely in for a rude awakening. They had heaters at the game in LA this week. I saw that. Now they're going to Buffalo. They're going to need, they're going to need Jesus there. That could be why they're minus seven and a half when yeah. you shouldn't be. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Um, okay, next game, Sunday night football. Huge playoff implications. Huge. It, NFC East. Giants versus Washington Commanders. I, Giants just put it in my booty la, uh, last Sunday. Uh, I, if, you gave me, if you told me Marco lean, I'd probably lean Giants plus the points. He likes uh, Commanders, I think. I Is do. that who you like? I do. Yeah. The Commanders to me... No, number one, they're at home. Number two, they're far more complete. Uh, their front yeah. seven is better than the Giants. I do worry about the run stop for the Giants because that's something that Washington likes to do. Yeah, the I know. Giants front seven, to me, after Terrible. watching the game, is so fucking bad. The Commanders the Eagles front that seven. Good? Well, the Eagles have the best offensive line in the league. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. No. By far, not even close. But the Giants front seven, just even on paper, the names are just not a lot alarming to me. I'm not really a big fan. I think they're really scrappy. They're going to have to run the ball for 250 yards if they're going to beat the Commanders is what I think because I don't see uh, Daniel Jones being able to pass the Giants out of this game. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the weapons around him. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I actually hope, personally, um, I'd rather see... Probably, I hate to say it. I'd probably rather see the Giants in the playoffs than Washington. Really? I know, I know. I I feel like I should like Heineke because he's a huge Brett Favre guy. And he's so scrappy. And yeah. just Ron Rivera is a better, I mean, yeah. he's an all-around better coach. Put it this way, I don't have so. strong feelings on that game. I just don't. Yeah. Like, I don't have feelings on it's it. It's tough. It's divisional. Um, I, I will give you a game that I do have a lot of passion on, and that's other Week 15 bets we're going to move on to. Um. I want the Lions to make the playoffs, and if the um, if they beat the Jets, they they move up, and that puts them in in a playoffs. 
And Let's did see you here. see the line? Yeah, they go to seven and seven. And if Seattle loses to the here, if the Giants lose, they go to seven, six, and a push, right? A tie. Yep. If Seattle loses, they go to seven and seven. That means they'd be within a half game of the playoffs, the Lions would be. And I really like I I like I said, you heard me earlier on the show. I love a team trying to come back into the playoffs. And what's kind of cool is I'm gonna have a team in each division trying to fight. So hopefully I get at least one of them. Listen, go Lions. It, I got news for you. That is another game. It's going to be an all-out war. Oh. I think if you see the NFL put a line at one, I think that it's going to be the over two. I think the, we thought we thought the game in, with Minnesota was going to go really, really far over. Here's the problem: what the Jets coming into this game, Joe Flacco coming in this game? No, they're hoping that Mike White can play. Okay. He had bruised ribs, went to the hospital, if I'm not mistaken. Um, hope he's okay. That's scary. Yeah, it is um, very scary. Yeah, he had an internal bleeding, but I mean, that's, I mean, a bruise is internal bleeding, but still, this guy got hit hard. Um, yeah, I hope the Lions can can beat him. Who do you like in that game? You got to give me a pick. Is it at Lions? Yeah. No. Yes. No, no. Yeah. It's uh, actually Lions are at the Jets. Lions are at the Jets. I'm right. I'm going to do exactly what my man here did. I don't know who's QB in for the Jets. I don't care. I want the Lions. I'm taking the Jets. Wow. I'm taking the Jets at home. You ready for my theory? You're going against me? I am. Huh. I love you to death. A lot of people that go against me like this usually lose. That's, that's true. That's me throwing it out there. Hey, that's true. Can Legit. I just say one thing? Though? Sure. I have zero... Zero confidence. Oh, here we go. Zero. Here we go. And Jared Goff in the cold weather. Zero confidence. And I think that the Jets D. He's a pretty boy. He is. He's a California kid. Wants nothing to do with the cold. Robert Soleil is going to send him? pressure. Did you He's see him send in pressure? Did you see him in the locker room? I seen him. He said that tastes different. I like him. I can't. I can't help but not like him. I hope he wins. Fuck I mean, him. I don't like him. Fuck you. I don't you, like Jared Goff. You bum. I think he's one of those absolute pretty boy pussies. I think he goes in New York. It's going to be cold as ice. I think that Sauce Gardner is the best cornerback. Listen to me. In the NFL, I think he's the best corner in the league right now. I can see that. That's it's not this that's year. Not I think he's. Better than Jalen Ramsey this year. Okay. First year in the league right now. This year, I'm going to catch a lot of heat. Balls. I don't care. This guy, Gardner, has unbelievable ball skills. His ability to retrace steps, get back into coverage is unbelievable. I look for him to intercept Jared Goff this week. Balls. Balls, balls, balls. I like the Jets. Plus one. Okay. Um, okay, I am going to give you the bets this week that I think I am betting as of now. Lions plus one. Dolphins plus seven and a half. Buccaneers plus the points. And we already heard my Jags. I'm hammering the Jags. Um, and the Raiders plus one against the Patriots. Because who? I, I know I, I bet the Raiders every fucking week. <laughs> but I hate the Patriots and I love the Raiders. And that's why I'm betting it. There's no logical reason why I'm betting the Raiders. So if you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to. No one forces you to bet what I bet. But those are the picks that I'm actually wanting to bet. And I just need to make sure there's no injuries that are going to freak me out, shit like that. So that's where I'm leaning right now. If I did the parlay that I talked about before the show, I'm going to add in the Jags because I they got, those Jags got me fired up. <laughs> um, they should. Okay. If I took the Lions plus one, and I'm going to call this the 100 to one. It's actually only a 58 to one, but you're going to live with it. Lions plus one. Raiders plus one. Dolphins plus seven and a half. Buccaneers money line. And Jags' money line pays pretty big. I kind of like it. So that's the big parlay that I'm giving you this week. But I will be taking these teams plus the points um, in every single game, um, probably on their own, pending injuries. It's Tuesday. I got to break it down more. But that's the parlay that I like this week. And and my favorite game of the week is going to be the Jags. I I... I'm telling you, you can't it. not That's it. the Jags. When you see the Jags plus 188 only paying 80 beans a rip against the fucking Dallas Cowboys who people are are saying Super Bowl all the way. I might be getting trapped in that bet, but I'm you know what? I'm diving in head first in the three foot pool. Either you're getting trapped or the whole state of Texas is getting trapped. It I mean I'm diving head first. You gotta dive. Yeah. 
Speaking of that, I'm gonna be getting trapped. Is this your prosciutto pound? Yeah, I'm gonna dive right Go into ahead. that fucking prosciutto sandwich, mozzarella, everything sliced thin, lettuce. You guess what? This mustard. is the final clip of our show, so make it good. Because we cut off the soccer. We don't want to talk about soccer right now. Yeah, fuck the soccer right now. All right, so give me the prosciutto right, listen, pound and cut I'm gonna the show. I'm going to give you that pounder, and then I'm out of here. We're out of here. I'm taking, uh, you guys are going to love me for this. Of course you are. I'm going to hear nothing but heat. Green Bay on the money line, parlayed with Philly on the money line. Two heavy favorites. One heavy favorite. One mediocre favorite. I here comes favorites. Here comes another dogfight of a game, though. I'm taking the commanders on the ML in that game. Last but not least, I'm taking the over 37 and a half in tomorrow night's game. And you know what? I'm going to throw something else in there. Let's hear it. I'm going to take. He's getting brave. I'm getting brave. What is it? Jags are getting how many? Four and a half. Taking the Jags. Plus four and a half. No, I'm getting them up to seven and a half. Okay. Okay. And that's going to give you, though, that's going to give you a really nice par. That par is going to play out like 390, which for me, uh, a lot of these heavy favorites, I'll take three. I'll take 400. I'm going to be honest with the with the fans. This guy loves playing with those lines. Me, I love it. I like the roof. Oh. With that being said, he loves those dogs. We're going to bark our lines. way out of here. I'm going to go eat dinner. I love you guys. <laughs> you guys are the best. I love this show. Love I you. love this show.